Hi everyone, remember me? It's Mr. Hall from the last video. You're going to be seeing my face a lot over the next couple of weeks especially because I'm going to be doing a series of videos in advisory called How to Be a Longhorn. How to Be a Longhorn is going to go through the W.T. White Student Campus Culture Handbook, which I'm about to show you how to access from your website. Some of you may have already seen it. And uh, we're going to go through this handbook piece by piece over the next two weeks and practice these uh, policies. Some of them are going to be new to you. Some of them, if you're a freshman, all of them are going to be new to you. And so we're going to give you the first two weeks to kind of understand and practice these expectations that we have for the campus. And then on August 29th, that's uh, a Monday two weeks from now, we're going to expect that everybody understands the rules, understands the expectations on campus, and does their best to follow them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the Student Campus Culture Handbook. So first off, you're going to want to make sure that you have your website for your specific grade level marked in your phone, bookmarked, bookmarked on your Chromebook if you have one, or your desktop or your laptop rather. And uh, this is going to be where you find your copy of the handbook. So follow this bit.ly link for your grade, and then you're going to scroll down to the W.T. White Student Campus Culture Handbook. Should be uh, very prominently displayed on the home page of the website. And boom, here it is, the W.T. White High School Student Campus Culture Handbook. You'll notice that if you open this in Google Docs, on the side here are all of the sections that we're going to be going over over the next two weeks. It should cover everything that you need to know about what teachers and faculty's expectations are of students uh, as we go throughout the year. So if you scroll past the first page of the document, you notice that we've got a chart listing every principal and counselor team, as well as who they cover by last name alphabetically. So you see that Shaw and Ross will cover every student in the building uh, with the last name from A to CRU. And then Captain and Foley will take CU through Hernandez of every age, every grade level, and so on and so forth. But really who you need to know to go to for things like discipline or uh, help from a counselor will be alphabet by last name, that middle uh, column there, all right? So the first section that we're gonna talk about from the handbook is arrivals, transitions, and dismissal. Basically all of the ways that we are expected to move as a large group on this campus, all right? There are 2,000 of us, which means that there's a lot of potential for chaos. And so uh, to try to curb some of that, we have these basic rules and expectations of how to act in the halls, how to act when you show up from school, and uh, how we are going to dismiss at the end of the day. First, let's talk about arrival at the beginning of the day. If you drive yourself, you're going to want to enter the student parking lot on the Ridgeside Drive entrance of the parking lot. And then at the end of the day, you're going to want to exit off of Crestline. That is going to help keep traffic moving smoothly and efficiently as a lot of people are trying to get to or from school. Uh, additionally, if you are uh, being dropped off by the bus or your parents, you're going to be dropped off in the front entrance. Everybody, regardless of where you are coming from or how you get to school, will enter school through the front entrance. That may have been kind of confusing this morning, but from now on, everybody is expected to enter through the front entrance. If you are a BTEC student, there's going to be a specific entrance for you. And then if you're a comprehensive student, you'll enter through the front entrance doors of the school. Everybody will enter through the front doors of school, boys, girls, ninth grade through 12th grade, doesn't matter. All right, you'll notice the red X's are where you can no longer enter the school. Uh, and that's going to be a tough change for a minute, I know for some of us, but it's just going to be safer for the building overall. It's very, very important that you do not open any other doors of the school for your friends or anyone else in the beginning of the day because we're gonna to want to have everyone go through the security checkpoint at the front. From 8.40 to 9.05, students can enter the building and go into the cafeteria where they will wait until the first bell rings to release for first period. It is also important to note that even if you drive into the student parking lot, that that entrance on this corner that you've used before will no longer be available to you and you'll need to walk around to the front of the building and enter through the front door. Again, I know it's gonna be a big change, but I trust you to make it well. Now let's talk about hallway transitions, all right? Anytime you're moving down the hallway, especially during passing periods or uh, before or after school with a big group, you're gonna to want to stay on the right side of the hallway, just as though you would stay on the right side of the highway, 
All right, it's just good driving practice and good sense. So make sure you stay on the right side. That keeps us from bumping into each other. Also, on the stairs, you'll notice that every stairwell, or almost every stairwell, is split into two. Uh, in that there is a specific downside and an upside. Isn't that true for life too? There's a downside and an upside to everything. As soon as you are done for the day, whether that's during regular dismissal time at 4.30 or early dismissal, you are expected to immediately leave the campus through any door that is most convenient to you. All right, it's not like the morning where you only have to go through the front. You can go out any door you please. If you are going to an after school uh, activity or tutoring session with another teacher, you need to have a pass, which we'll get to here in just a minute. But otherwise, everyone is expected to vacate the building when we dismiss. The last thing I want to talk about today are the three different types of hall passes that you'll use here at WT White this year. The first and most often used and arguably most stylish is the restroom pass vests that your teacher has for you to use during instructional time. This vest can be used to go to the closest restroom or whatever other destination you might need to go to during class time with teacher approval. Uh, only one student should be out per class at a time and students should leave phones with the teacher when taking the pass that way you get back to class as soon as possible. You can wear these vests or you can sling them over your shoulder just so long as you have them when you are out in the hallway during class time. And I feel like I just need to mention, hey, look at me. Don't do anything weird or gross with the passes, please. Nobody wants to deal with that, okay? Students wanting to go to the nurse should use an official nurse pass provided by Nurse Wolf to your teachers. Uh, and the third and final type of pass that we'll use is for before or after school and during lunch. These will be small printed paper passes, official WT White passes that will uh, help you go to early morning tutoring sessions uh, or your teacher's class during lunch or a tutoring session after school whenever everybody's supposed to be out of the building. I should note that if you want to go to an early morning tutoring session, you should get a pass from your teacher that you're going to see the day before you want to go see them for early morning tutoring so that you already have your pass ready to go when you show up to school that morning. And that's it for today. We'll go over more parts of the handbook over the next two weeks. Thank you for your attention and uh, be good to yourself and others this week as we start off the year strong. Advisors, you can now close out this video and lead the discussion on the next slide. We'll see you all next time.